So after I painted that flamingo, it was a pink flamingo and I shared it on my social media, but also a real time video on Patreon. I actually painted right after that one, this hummingbird. I really like that looser style. So this is our reference photo. And I like to take my time going over all the colors I see in the bird and how the eye looks like and what colors I can find actually in my own palette to put it all together. It's important to think light to dark, going from light to dark when it comes down to watercolors. So that's how I start building my palette. For example, I see some purple in there, maybe quinacolor magenta, maybe bright violet. There's definitely some of that sub green and viridian hue and so on. So I kind of look at the, my reference photo and I try to decide what colors can I use to resemble this reference photo and then whatever i see white there is some shade and color to it anyway so like blue maybe there's some van dyke brown yellow ochre so those will be the colors that create that white color and of course i'm going to try to preserve some paper white as well pencil sketches are always available for download on patreon so please go ahead and download it if you need to trace it or print it I do like to use a washi tape. Washi tape helps to keep the paper in down, that's one thing, but I also like the white frame. Now, what is the first thing I always do? After I grab my brush, I dip my brush in water and then wipe it slightly on the towel. And this is when I'm thinking about the colors, the first colors I'm gonna use. I decided to start wet on dry. Loose style is actually not that simple because you have to think about a lot about transparency of your watercolors and but also to make it not so tight and not focus on too many details. So my idea of painting in a loose style like this is to use more water with my paint so more diluted and go in small uh, parts like just starting a little bit at a time and watching what happens, letting those colors mix, bleed into each other. And of course, there's some sputter involved as well. So don't worry if uh, your paint just sputters or goes all over the page because that's part of the loose style, at least my kind of loose style, what I, how I see it. So I'm mixing those colors as I keep moving and kind of recreating that head, the head of the hummingbird. And I am mixing those colors. There's my marine blue, there's viridian hue, there's sub green. I am mixing those and also I'm adding isolidolinon yellow deep to the viridian hue. And I'm using the tip of my brush. This is a long round eight Aqua Elite series by Princeton. And I do use the full belly of it as well, but a lot of it is just using the tip of my brush, which, which helps a lot to control what I'm doing and just spreading the paint, but I also want smaller, thinner lines sometimes. So what I also did is I mixed some of the green with the Isolid on Yellow Deep to create even lighter or more like green, like grassy green, green color, basically. And so I mix colors as I go, and then I apply these colors to the head of the hummingbird. And so it is wet on dry, but a lot of these colors bleed into each other. And I want that, I want parts of it to bleed. So I paint a little bit there of that green and the lighter green, and then I'm adding a lot of color, but I'm not adding on top really, it's just like kind of like on the side. And I'm hoping these colors will kind of merge and uh, start bleeding towards each other. So the colors will spread in a way on its own because the parts are wet, but I also want the separation of colors at the same time. So I had my, in my mind like an idea of how I would like this to look like. So I kind of was going with that idea of spots, a splatter, um, not focusing on much on detail, although I do want to focus on the eye because eye and the beak are pretty much always like my favorite part to paint but also like important to bring more to my painting. I want that painting to have a feeling so when people are looking at it they're like okay I can feel that bird like I'm next to it. So I just mix some of the peach thalo blue with cobalt blue and I'm adding more water because I needed more water and more diluted paint actually because I never rinsed really my brush well in that water. I actually just grabbed the water and um, there was already some paint and I just kept working with it because I knew it would be more transparent on a more transparent way. Whole wine are pretty vibrant. 
so I don't have any problem really achieving that vibrancy although I do like to go with more than one layer and I will be adding another layer here as well so this was my neutral tint mixed with Equin Red and I am just adding it on top and mixing it with the bright violet there is Van Dyke Brown and the tip of my brush I use that to create small detail like all that little hair so that brush is perfect because it's stiffer so I can definitely paint that little hair and I keep dragging my brush just filling it out what I can add more and there's my yellow ochre at the same time mixing it with the Van Dyke Brown so it depends what effect you're going for I just keep adding colors here because I want some parts to be more bloomy and then just I want like the open space a little bit I want the softer effect I want all of all of it and see how it all works together this is definitely looser than I normally paint it's very different but I enjoy it it's so much fun that after that flamingo I just wanted to paint the hummingbird that was my next thought like I just need to paint something very colorful and of course it's the hummingbird that has all these colors those greens lime greens yellows and aqua colors and stuff like that so there is my cobalt blue with some of the peach yellow blue and I'm adding a little more around the belly area of the hummingbird and then yes that belly needs to be a little more on a wider side because I'm using way more water so it's more diluted the paint is more diluted with water and it's more transparent so this is way more transparent i'm going really softly on the paper and it's really all about watching what happens and based on that you can decide what is your next move and how much more paint color you want or just water going for it adding lines and sometimes i do use more of that tip of the brush here or if the full belly depends how much paint do i want and how little the, the areas is supposed to be covered like I want it to be covered so it all depends but having that longer brush so this is a long round um, it really is like nice to have like it's almost like having two brushes in one because um, if I didn't have that tip so long and thin I'd probably be using now a smaller brush so this is a very similar brush to the black velvet series by silver brush which that one is way softer so if you don't like it because it's too soft that one then this would probably work better for you because this is way on the stiffer side and this is the aqua elite series by princeton the eye first and now i am adding colors but just in some areas because by looking at the reference photo it's like there's still light in that eye and i don't want to lose it and there and i saw that layer underneath which was that blue this is when i grabbed some of the indigo which was off screen but that was just my indigo and now it's bright violet with the purple mix which was the coin red and neutral tint at the same time and i'm just going over the beak i'm going over the beak and trying to define it and again i don't want to focus too much on my detail here on the details i want this to still stay on the looser side and there's my burnt sienna and i find it that it's just the way the colors go on top of each other and how they mix it just makes them look so natural and there's some of the sub green there's a little bit more sub green so this is the thing what once you have that base of cobalt blue and burnt sienna and actually the third color i like to add on the edges is, is neutral tint but once you have these base colors you can just decide what colors else do you want maybe this branch has some pink in it so you can add quin red or oprah even or some other colors that's the thing like once you have that base you don't have to um, just go with those three colors uh, which is like my my small like a uh, recipe basically that's like a recipe like I always go with these three basic ones and then everything else is just like an addition and I don't add those additional colors in the exact same spots it's kind of like choosing spots and places like where I want to add maybe some branches and so on that wider the hair just spreads a little bit wider sometimes versus when you use a smaller brush it's much easier there is my marine blue and just adding colors on top of colors and then let it dry i have to let it dry before i can continue adding more like another layer and colors so there's my sap green and there is my viridian hue and i'm going for a little more color inside the eye and i'm very careful this time this is wet on dry so 
I do have to be careful and I'm twisting my brush because I always want that pointy part of the brush so so I have more control and going around the edges to darkening up some parts of the eye so this is like my second layer if you're interested to learn a little more about painting eyes in watercolors I do have a class how to paint eyes in watercolor on my teachable side uh, so there's the address and um, if you are interested there's two classes actually inside of one one is painting a horse's eye and the other one is the cat's eye and I found that class to be very successful uh, not just from the point of view of how many students enrolled but how well my students did and do like they still do and it's amazing like how well um, everyone was painting or painted already and and I've seen the progress and everything and there is also a challenge painting challenge and so you can paint a cat's eye on your own where I also provide a pencil sketch and a reference photo so here I go with that tail I add a little more color and this is like a more transparent uh, layer and still adding some hair on the bottom I'm using the tip of that brush around the feet um, those claws just spreading the paint sometimes too like this this part already dry this is already dry and the painting uh, wet on dry some parts like once I already paint they become wet on wet so there's my Van Dyke brown and some of the reds and then I added also bright violet and I'm going for those feathers for the wings again and more water because I need this color to be more transparent I need the colors to be transparent and stay more on a transparent side so the the feel of that hummingbird is still like delicate and it's softer right now I'm lifting up because I feel like okay I, you know what I just want more highlight so the color already stained parts of my bird and uh, which is great so I already have a layer but do I want it to be super vibrant or not and this is where the paper towel comes handy so you can lift up I don't touch everywhere I just kind of squeeze squish my paper towel and go with like a one angle one side one little piece and just touch some areas so I go very slow here because I have to have on my brush enough water mixed in with my paint so I like to refer to like milk heavy cream half and half basically when I talk about the consistency like how much paint is diluted with that water so this would be more on a milky between milk and half and half half and half is what you put in your in your coffee the creamer so that would be that kind of consistency of the paint so the lines are smooth and you can continue creating that longer stroke but if you're painting like on arches and this is arches these papers can handle so much they're excellent they're really really good 